G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, this is part six of the How To Clone Scout Trooper web series. Now, this is the last and final video. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick overview on how I went about actually painting one of the pieces of armor with the kind of camo style, just to give you guys a quick ideal reference for you going forward. You can, of course, do something completely different if you wanted to, or if you wanted to stick to what I'm doing and kind of change it up a bit, you're more than welcome to. It's really just an example to show you how I go about finishing my costumes. Now, of course, the one on my right here is done in a tan color. I went with a bit of a green one just to show you the difference and comparisons between how the colors can affect the outcome and the kind of uh, feel you're going for with your personal costume. And that outcome is this one here. Like you can see, is a very different color tone. I mean, this is probably closer to more of the episode three ones we actually see. I decided to make my personal one a bit different from everyone else's out there. So I went with a more tan ochre kind of base color, which I personally loved. But for those who want to stick to more of the uh, screen, you can go for a more greenish kind of one. But let's jump into the tutorial and I'll show you how I went about making this guy. Painting this guy, not making. We've already done that in episode one. All right, so to make sure we can go ahead and paint this up properly, ensure that you've actually gone ahead and coated the whole helmet in some wood glue or PVA glue, depending on what you call it. Then go ahead and grab the base color of your choice. I'm gonna go with the green, and I'm actually gonna mix it up with some white and some ochre to give it a bit of a difference rather than the basic bland green it currently is. This will give it a bit of a change and color differentiation to make it stand out and look a bit stranger <laughs> and unusual, more unique, I guess I should say. Then go ahead and coat the whole thing. You can use this as a main primer as well as a secondary coat. So once you've of course painted up once, you then go back and coat it again so you have a lovely finish like this. Be sure to wrap it around and get all the interior points that you actually need. That will actually be the parts that are coated on this design. Now we can move on to the camo section. Now I apply the camo simply by painting it on in these kind of peculiar shapes. You can do this however you wish. But what I decided to do is find the base color, then find three other colors that are similar to it, but have enough difference that you can obviously see them. So I've gone with a brown, an ochre, and a black. What I started doing was slowly start to apply random uh, designs to the helmet, giving each one a relatively decent space, so that way you can fill them up with other colors in between to really add that nice, unique camo look. Some are larger than others, as you can see, but I've wrapped it around the helmet to really give it a nice movement and flow. If you did them as single pieces stuck onto random sections without actually having any cool curves going around the angles, it will look a bit dull, but this way it really creates constant movement and gives it a far more intriguing design. So you can already see we've added the ochre and the brown, and it's already starting to really stand out. Now, of course, to take it even further, we'll go ahead and add some darker colors. So we'll go ahead now and actually add in the grays and the blacks to where we need them, just to fill in the detail and create the contrast. Then, of course, to go ahead and make this even cleaner and stand out, you can go ahead and dry brush it. Of course, dry brushing is the technique where you grab silver or white paint and go over all the edges, or at least some of the edges, to really make it look like paint is chipped or it's just worn. However you want to finish it, you can completely do it to a more extreme standard like that, or keep it a bit well well worn or factory new. It completely depends on what you're trying to achieve out of this. So that's it. Hopefully you got a better understanding of how I actually went about painting. It's very simple, very easy. I mean, this is a very basic technique. That costume was the first one I've ever actually done as a camo pattern, so I was learning. Right now I'd go back and do it a lot differently if I uh, rebuilt the costume, but this is the simplest way to go about doing it. It still gets a very nice effect. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, but then again, of course, you can make it even more dirtier by adding mud or different textures, different colors, different battle damage. It's completely up to you and how your final costume is gonna resemble in your chosen photo shoot or photo shoot location. Um, it just always helps. I mean, I knew I was gonna be shooting mine in a kind of swampy area, so I knew that the tan kind of color would complement each other, so it really depends. This would work well in a forest, but you just don't wanna blend in too much because then it's kind of uh, defeats the purpose of putting a lot of time and effort into a costume if you don't really see it. But that's it, thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you have any in production stills or you actually have your final photos done, you can either tweet them at me or you can uh, Facebook me. Both links are in the description box below and I would love to see them. I'll give my feedback and share them myself. So yeah, can't wait to see what you guys produce. But otherwise, thank you so much. I enjoy building these tutorials and showing you guys how I make my stuff so you guys can replicate it yourselves. 
And until the next one, catch you later.